straight lines. Now, you may well have done these things to death at school, but you might not have. And so this is a video where we're going to sort of just maybe fill in some gaps that you might have. So straight lines, they're kind of all around us. If you look around, you see straight lines absolutely everywhere. And you will have been using them in your work ever since you first picked up one of these and drew a line across a page. Now in science and mathematics, straight lines are extremely useful for describing the relationship between things. So for example, you might go out and do an experiment where you measure some quantity, maybe the temperature, at different points in time, maybe, and you want to plot all your data on a graph. And quite often you'll find that your data points will look like they lie on a straight line. So we could pick up our ruler and draw our best guess of a straight line through these points. And then if we could figure out an equation for this line, then that would mean we could estimate our variable, maybe that temperature, at data points times other than the ones we measured at. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to figure out what, how to calculate equations for straight lines, how to draw graphs of them, and we're going to talk a bit about some properties. Kia ora koto, I'm Richard Brown, one of your Biophysical Principles lecturers. So let's get started with a graph of a straight line, and we'll see if we can figure out its equation. So given a certain x value that we might, we might want to know, we can sketch on this triangle here. And then if we wanted to figure out the y value, you can think of it as the height of this red triangle plus the distance from the bottom of that triangle down to the x-axis. So let's work out a formula for the triangle height first. Well, if x equals 0, then quite clearly the height's going to be 0 as well because the triangle is kind of just a point. If we move x out to 1, then our height will be 2. And then if x is 2, then the height is 4. And if x is 3, then the height would be 6, etc. So maybe you can see a formula for this height in terms of x. That's right, it's just doubling it. So the height will be 2x. And the number 2 is called the slope or the gradient of that line. Now to get our formula for y, we just need to add on that extra bit, which here is just 1. You can, you can read that off the graph from where the graph cuts the y-axis. So that means overall our formula is going to be y is equal to 2x plus 1. So let's test it out on a point we haven't already looked at. If x is 1.5, then our formula says that y will be 2 times 1.5 plus 1, which would give us 4. Then if x is negative 1, our formula says that y will be 2 times negative 1 plus 1, which will be negative 1. These both look right on our graph, so it looks like we've cracked it. So in general, an equation for a line looks like y equals mx plus c, where the number m is called the slope of the graph, or the steepness, uh, and C is called the y-intercept, i.e. where the graph cuts the y-axis. So let's take a look at how to draw the graph from an equation. Probably the easiest way to draw a graph given to you in this form is to first mark the point C on the vertical axis, and then to find a second point. So for example, you could go across 1 and up or down M, down if it's negative, or across 2 and up or down 2m, etc. Or you could just use the formula to calculate a second point by putting in a different x value. Once you've got your two points, you can then draw at the line connecting them, and that is your line. Let's practice by drawing the line y equals negative 0.5x plus 3. So I can start by indicating my y-intercept, which is going to be 3. So I'll draw that on my graph as a little point. And then I can go across 1 and down 0.5. It's down because it's negative, because uh, the slope is negative 0.5. And that will give me my second point. Or, for example, I could put in x equals 4, um, which would give me negative uh, 2 plus 3, which would give me 1 as my y, y value. Those are two different ways of getting um, the two points. The second one has the two points further apart, which is probably a little bit better for drawing an accurate line. But then we can draw our line by just drawing the straight line, connecting the two points up. What if we want to go the other way? So if we want to get the equation from a graph or from some, or from some data points. Well, getting the equation from a graph is pretty straightforward. 
All you need to do is to read off C from where the graph cuts the y-axis and then calculate M by doing some kind of rise over run calculation. It might be that you can't actually see the y-intercept, just the line you've been given. So that's still okay. All you need actually is two points on the graph and we can get the whole equation. We'll call these points x0, y0 and x1, y1. If you're reading these off a physical graph, it's smart to make them nice and far apart from each other to increase your accuracy. In this case, m will just be the rise over the run, which will be y1 minus y0 over x1 minus x0. So that's how you calculate m. And the equation for the overall graph in this case will then be y is y0 plus m times x minus x0. You're just going to, you can just take that one as given if you like. We could rearrange this slightly to be mx plus y0 minus mx0. Okay, that means that the value, the intercept c actually just pops out from this equation and it can be calculated as c is y0 minus mx0. So for example, let's find the line through the points negative 1, 3 and 4, 10.5. So x0 is going to be negative 1, uh, y0 will be 3, x1 will be 4, and y1 will be 10.5. We can just bypass drawing the graph, in fact, and calculate it directly. So m will be y1 minus y0 over x1 minus x0. So I'll just plug all those numbers in. It'll be 10.5 minus 3 over 4 minus negative 1. So that will be 7.5 over 5. Don't forget, minus minus is plus which gives me 1.5 for my slope m. Then my intercept c, that will just be y0 minus mx0. I know m now, so I can do that. It'll be 3 minus 1.5 times negative 1, which is 3 plus 1.5, which gives me 4.5. So my equation for my line should therefore be y equals 1.5x plus 4.5. At this point in time, you can maybe pause the video and just check this is right by substituting in those two points we started with, or the x values, and see if the line, the equation, produces the right y values. Let's just place these graphs in context in physics just quickly. So while we tend to always teach graphs with the variables x and y, these are just kind of mathematical placeholders and conventions for what they're called. In physics, we tend to have meaningful variable names corresponding to something physical. So for example, a linear, linear just means straight line, position time graph will be of the form x equals mt plus c. So m is the slope, c is the, it'll be called the x-intercept now. So in this case, the variable x is now on the vertical axis um, because it's our dependent variable. We want to know it as a function of the time t, and the t is going to be on our horizontal axis. It can be a little bit off-putting seeing this at first, but you'll get used to it pretty quickly the more you practice. Now, some important physical properties satisfy linear relationships like this. So we've been working a lot with position, velocity, and acceleration. If you have a linear position time graph, like before, the slope m represents the velocity, and we've actually calculated a lot of those already. Or looking ahead in the course slightly, given a spring, the force applied to a spring is proportional to its extension, and there's a formula called Hooke's Law that looks like F equals Kx. If you had a graph, therefore, of force versus extension, then the slope of this graph will be the spring constant K. Uh, just a heads up, though, you don't actually know about forces and springs yet. You'll learn about these a bit later on in the course. It's just another example where something physical comes out of a straight line relationship. In this case, the slope of our graph was the spring constant, k. Now, the last little note that I want to make about straight lines is to do with interpolation versus extrapolation. Imagine you've gone out and you've collected some data, you've plotted them on some axes, and you can see that the data look like they have some kind of straight line relationship. So you've got your ruler out and you've drawn what you think is a line of best fit through your data, and you have used the methods from this video to calculate an equation for your line. Let's just say for the sake of argument that our data fell between x equals 10 and x equals 23. Now, if you wanted to predict your measured value y for a value of x that you didn't get a measurement for, um, somewhere in the middle of your data, 
then you could use the formula to do this. So if x was between our extreme limits, um, predicting a value of y in this way is called interpolation, and all going to plan it should give us a relatively good estimate of what our value y would be. Um, however, if we were to try and use our equation to find out values of y outside of the data we've predicted uh, or collected, then this can lead to problems because we don't necessarily know how our data behaves outside of our measured zone. So it could be that our data kind of tapers off after the measured uh, range and maybe before it as well. So if that's what was actually happening in our physical system and we used our straight line to predict what happens for some large value of x, then we could end up miles off. So when we use our straight line to, or our measured line, to estimate something outside of our data range, this is known as extrapolation and is usually considered to be quite a bad idea unless we have some very sound reason to believe that our data should behave that way outside of our measured range. That pretty much covers off the, basis, uh, the basics of straight lines. Um, this may have been a bit of a refresher for you, but hopefully it helps you in your understanding of how you can work with equations of lines um, and relate them to graphical properties. So you're now able to take a straight line given to you as a graph and to calculate the equation that describes it. And you know how to draw the graph of a straight line given an equation. And once again, any of these things that are feeling a little bit unfamiliar, they'll come right with just a bit of practice. So I encourage you to do that. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Kakite anō.